What's up everybody, Major Retired Richard Ojeda here, and you are watching Ojeda Live. Countdown achieved. It's time for Ojeda Live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Ojeda Live. We got Maureen on here first, followed by Shelly Gabish from Wisconsin with her blue waves. We got Ainsley Mather from Dallas, Texas. We got Kyle and Carla Smith on here. Last night they wasn't here because they were at the REO Speedwagon concert. Uh, lucky. Uh, Kenneth Polly from Virginia. We got Harvey Garrett on here. What's up, Harvey? We got Charlene Antaman on here. We got Antonia Monaco. Edda Russell is with us. Rima Butcher is with us. Glenna Marley is with us. Welcome to the show, Glenna. I don't think I've ever said your name, so welcome. Monica Sue Phillips from Kentucky is with us. Michael Waggy, welcome to the show, Michael. How you doing? Uh, Joseph Lacey from Las Vegas. Michael Cottle is on here. Uh, Matt Knight is with us from Pennsylvania. Richard Metz from Parkersburg, West Virginia. Lynn Haar is with us from Alabama. Wanda Woy is here from Pennsylvania. Dennis Petro is here from Florida. Welcome to the show, Dennis Petro. I've never said your name before, so welcome and thank you for tuning in. Margie Hummel is with us from Escanaba. We got Sharon Harder on here from Wisconsin. Beverly Goldberg is on here from Coral Springs, Florida. <clears throat> All right, everybody, make sure you're hitting them thumbs up. Make sure you are hitting them hearts throughout the whole entire 30 minutes. And then when we're done with this, make sure that you find somebody that, that you think should follow Ojet Alive and convince them to follow. And follow on both Facebook and on YouTube because I do stuff with both. And like I said, I'm getting ready to take off to Europe uh, in May for 25 days. And you don't want to miss it, folks. So that's why it's important that you follow me on uh, Facebook because I'll be going live and doing videos on Facebook. We'll move them over to, to YouTube, but if you want to see them while I'm doing them, you need to be following me on Facebook. All right, so if you love someone who has heart disease, cancer, diabetes, depression, asthma, pregnancy, and arthritis, just know that if you vote for Republicans and Donald Trump, they plan to take away insurance for those people while they attack the Affordable Care Act. So let that sink in. And once again, the Republicans are, are screaming that they're going to do away with the Affordable Care Act. And what are they going to replace it with? Because they never made anything to replace the Affordable Care Act. In Donald Trump's four years every week, he promised infrastructure and he promised replacing the Affordable Care Act. And he did neither. Neither. And the truth is, the Affordable Care Act, it may not be perfect, but... It has a lot of people across this country covered with coverage. And let me tell you something. Uh, insurance coverage is something that will allow you to sleep at night. Not having insurance coverage is something that will keep you up late at night. Because all it takes, all it takes is one thing. Anybody out there who doesn't have insurance and gets injured, I'm going to tell you, you're going to find yourself in a world of shit. It's like literally they will throw you to the wolves if you don't have insurance. Uh, there's a, I, I love It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Uh, believe it or not, Danny DeVito donated $1,000 to my campaign when I ran for Congress. But, uh, you know, I, there's, a, there's one of the episodes where uh, Sweet D goes to the emergency room because she had a heart attack and they basically said, do you have insurance? And she was like, no. They said, well, Get out. And I know that that's television. But the truth is, is there's a lot of truth in that too. And that is that they really don't give a shit. They really don't. Because at the end of the day, all they care about is making that money. And once again, if you're going to vote for Republicans when they're telling us they're going to kill your capabilities, then you are absolutely immoral. And if you have heart disease, cancer, diabetes, depression, asthma, pregnancy, and arthritis, and you vote Republican when they take your capabilities from you and you're out there squalling and crying. I hope that somebody who is close to you will remind you that you should have never given them that capability. And because you did, they're going to take from you unlike you've ever seen before. Folks, let me tell you something. These people do not care about you. They don't give a shit about the working class. 
It's absolutely sickening that we have so many people in this country that are stupid. And I'm talking like mind-numbingly stupid. All these people going to these rallies, everybody that goes to these rallies, they get in front of the camera, they open their mouth, and none of them, none of them speaks about anything that's factual. It's all bullshit. It's all crap that they got from Newsmax, OAN, and friggin' Fox. And it's an absolute shame. And the bad part about this is, is those people are being duped. And those people are thinking that the Republicans give a shit about them. And they're thinking that now all of a sudden they're a bunch of poor Republicans. And in the end, they're going to learn that the Republicans ain't never gave a shit for them. That the Republicans have never gave a shit about anything trickling from their plates. It's never happened and it never will happen. Because at the end of the day, when you give money to the filthy rich, they stick that shit in a daggone account. Uh, and they sure as hell don't use it to build the economy. That's a fact. You give money to poor people, they spend it. They spend it local on the economy. I don't give a shit what they spend it on. They can buy a bag on sneakers and beer for all I give a shit. It still goes into the economy. When poor people get money in their hands, they spend it. When rich people get money, they hoard it. And they've been hoarding it. And this whole bullshit about trickle-down economics that Ronald Reagan's piece of shit line ass pushed, it's still tricking people today. And the bad part about it is, is we know it doesn't work. It's never worked. But it's still tricking people today. Because why? Because we got stupid people in our country. Because we have allowed education to be absolutely watered down to the point where most people, they barely grasp what the hell's going on. They can read at a third grade level. They can count the money in their pocket, but that's about as far as their math skills go. You know, as far, in terms of writing and reading, they, they literally can't do it. And that's what we're producing. That's what we're producing. You know, there was a time when you could say, I'm very happy because we produce tax-paying citizens that work. But right now, we're literally handicapping the next generation. And what we're trying to do while we're taking everything from them, we're trying to make them. We're trying to force them into friggin' labor rooms where they're going to be having these children. That, by the way, the moment that that woman has that child, they're going to then basically point a, 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 a target on her back because if she has to file for women, infants, and children, if she has to file for welfare, they're going to absolutely try to drag her through the friggin' garden. But make no mistake about it, they'll make her have that child. And then they will drag her through the garden and call her everything but a human being just to prove their friggin' point. And they're not going to prove it. A Colorado man has been charged for helping drag Michael Fanone, the law enforcement officer, into the crowd on January the 6th at the Capitol. Uh where Michael Fanone took a serious beat to include having uh, tasers shoved in his crotch. But this jack loon that pulled him in got five years. Five years. So, five years. That's a significant amount of time in prison. I mean, I think anybody who goes to prison, if you're there for just four weeks, you're going to have a tough time. It's going to be scary. Like uh, Jack Acid said for the next four months, uh, Navarro, Peter Navarro. Uh, I'm hoping that he gets his ass handed him, but but I'm going to guarantee you, folks, Peter Navarro probably went to a country club. He probably went to a country club where for the next four months, he's going to get up every morning, read his paper, eat lunch, go out, and and and, and they're going to give him some, some easy job in the friggin' library or something like that. And in four months, he's going to be out, which is bullshit because, you know, he participated in this coup. And he's getting four, four months. These poor dumb bastards that went to the Capitol because Donald Trump told them to go there and fight for their democracy, well, they're getting sentenced to prison for significant amounts. And here's the thing. They deserve it. If you and your friends gang up on a bunch of cops and beat the shit out of them, then you deserve the prison time that you get. It's the downside that these enablers that were next to Donald Trump are getting in trouble, but they're getting basically reduced sins, you know, a couple months here, a couple months there, uh, uh, probation. 
But these freaking jackaloons are getting it. And like I said, I, I, they deserve it, but I want to see those other assholes get it too. They're the enablers. They're the one that started all this shit. If they didn't put together this plan, none of this would have ever happened. And they should be held accountable for that. Jeffrey Sobol, uh, Sable, 53 years of age, was given three years on top of the five years of three years supervised release after serving 85% of that sentence. So five years, 85% of that sentence, he's going to have to serve at least four of those five years. Uh, and then he's going to get three years of supervised release. He also is going to have to pay $32,000 for restitution. Uh, I think that, uh, that Michael Fanone should absolutely have the ability to sue him directly, uh, sue everybody, but sue him also directly for what he did. More and more people are being uh, basically outed. And ladies and gentlemen, I cannot stress enough the importance for everybody that hears my voice to go to the FBI January 6th page. That's all you have to Google, and you'll go there. And then go through those pictures. It may take a little while, but go through those pictures because you may find somebody, because all the pictures that they have on their site are people that haven't been caught yet. They don't know the names and locations of these people. So if you go on there and you find some Jacqueline that you know, call them and report them. I don't even care if it looks like somebody that you know. Call them, report it, because the FBI will do that background check and they will find out. And at the end of the day, if the guy wasn't there, he wasn't there. Maybe he was. And make no mistake about it, there's lots of ways that they have to be able to prove if these people were there, like just basically looking at their phone data, because it will show exactly where they are when they were there. And point, but folks, let me tell you something. It's like a map, and it go, it can show every single place that you've been. That's a fact. Uh, you may find one of your local jackaloons that participated in the melee, and you know what? Report them. I don't give a shit. You know, at the end of the day, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm, I've never been a guy that said call the authorities. I'm 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 more of a go behind a connex and you guys you guys do what you got to do, but when you walk around that connex, you're friends again. That's how it goes. I I believe in that type of stuff. I believe in 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 going behind the woodshed and 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 some people just need their asses whipped. But uh, folks, there's a lot of people they need to go down for this shit. The Alabama Young Republicans County Vice Chair and Tom Butler's campaign chairman. Kyle Luter has now been arrested for sexual torture and murder. So the Alabama Young Republicans County Vice Chair, another Republican in leadership that turns out to be a real, real shit stain. Yeah, there we go. Is every Republican a douchebag? Uh, good Lord. Murder, anti-LGBTQ, Campaign finance crimes. Folks, it does not end with these jackaloons. They're all a bunch of scoundrels. All of these people that are, are surrounding themselves, that, that surrounded themselves with Donald Trump, they're all liars, scoundrels, cheats. Uh, every last damn one of them. All of them are garbage. Does everyone remember about Marge the trainer at Green trying to take credit for funding that she voted against? Yeah. Well, Boebert has now also been caught taking credit for $20 million in funding that she voted against. So, let me tell you something. This is just, it's like a gift every day that keeps giving. You know, when you catch these people lying about that, at the end of the day, the one thing that they did that's unforgivable is that they lied. They lied to their constituents about, about funding that they didn't secure. And I tend to think that every time a Republican lies, they lose more and more support. Mars the train wreck green, uh, for some odd reason, happens to be uh, very, very well liked. I, you know, it amazes me that a Republican that's got something between their friggin' ears doesn't step up and run against her in that district, but maybe nobody in her district has anything between their ears. I mean, they've elected her twice now, so that kind of says that they have to be pretty stupid, uh, pretty pretty dumb people 
to to continue voting for people that do nothing for them, like Marsha Trainwreck Green, like Jim Jordan, like Matt Gates, like Lauren Boebert. Uh, there's a lot of these jackaloons like that that do jack shit. But once again, folks, you always have to be willing to bust these people out. This is why it's important that you know how your representatives votes, especially on things like the infrastructure bill, because the infrastructure bill is bringing millions upon millions of dollars to every single state in the United States of America. And if the Republicans are voting against this, but yet this money goes to their states, creates jobs, fixes their roads and bridges, they do not deserve to be able to stand there and take credit for it. To stand in the line with the shovel acting like they're going to break ground when they voted against that capability. And what you need to do is you need to be right there on that spot when they hand that person that, that shovel, you need to make enough noise to let everybody know they voted against this. She's taking credit for funding that she did not secure or he did not secure, depending on what state you're in. And that's a fact. All right. Let's see what else we got. Another 870 Russian troops were killed in Ukraine yesterday. And you know what? Some of them may have been killed in Russia by Ukrainian drones. Uh, right now, there's all kinds of stuff that's going on in Russia. And I mean, it's getting really, really bad every day. Uh, there's also like a, a group of Russians that are raising up and are like literally going to wage war uh, on Putin. So don't know if any of those have already started fighting or are losing their lives. Are they counted in the number of Russian losses? I don't know. Are these Russian troops only killed in Ukraine? Are those the numbers that are being reported to the Kiev Independent? I'm not sure. But 870 Russian troops, whether they're in Ukraine or in Russia, that's a significant loss of life, and it's every single day, as we know. I wish we would start getting the number of Russians killed on Russian grounds, because that's also pretty interesting. And I saw a chart the other day that had locations of how far out Ukrainian drones have been able to go and strike Russian uh, capabilities and structures. So Ukraine has taken the UAV fight to another level. And folks, I'm telling you, we have helped them. We are providing them with UAVs that are next level UAVs that Russia don't have, that China don't have, that nobody's got. I'm telling you right now, too, and I'm going to be honest with you, I ain't scared of China either. You show me an army that gets out there and marches like that, and I'll show you an army that don't know how to friggin' fight. They may be able to use human waves, but at the end of the day, they lose big time. Uh, on top of all this, another 37 armored personnel carriers destroyed, 45 more wheeled vehicles destroyed, eight more tanks destroyed, 35 artillery systems destroyed, and 34 UAVs destroyed and more, or 23 UAVs. So yeah, it's still every day, nothing has changed. It's just an ass whooping every single day. Jim Jordan recently chaired a congressional hearing on locker room safety. Really? Really? This is the guy who we know looked the other way while their team doctor prayed on his athletes in the showers. You know, standing and watching the young kids shower, the, 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 the college students shower and, 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 and doing different things during the testing process to see how they're doing. Uh, Jim Jordan looked the other way, and we know that. And we've already got people that have went to the house and have testified how Jim Jordan called them, crying, begging them to lie for him. So once again, locker room safety, take all the time you want. The man who chose to look the other way while a perverted sports doctor sexually assaulted members of the team is sitting in judgment now about locker room safety. 
That is about as bad as a man threatening subpoenas for others doing exactly what he has done. Once again, that's him. Once again, Jim Jordan threatening people with subpoenas, but he has still yet to answer the subpoena that he was given for the January 6th hearing. So let that sink in, folks. You can't make this bullshit up. That's a fact. I love this because this guy is just hilarious and he's taking it to the new levels. And that's Jimmy Kimmel, who is definitely under Donald Trump's skin. Uh, but recently he really ripped up Donald Trump by bringing Melania into it when he said the real loser in all of this will be Melania, who may end up with half of nothing of what Donald Trump owns. And, you know, folks, they can be pissed off about this, but the truth is, is I don't have pity for her. First and foremost, she is not a genius. She's not a smart person. She was granted a friggin' Einstein visa because Donald Trump used his powers and wealth to get her something that she did not deserve. So technically, she's in this country illegally because that's bullshit. She, I guarantee you right now, if there is an exam that she has to take, she'd fail it right now. And don't get me wrong, I'm going to tell you right now, because you're talking to a person who travels and loves to go to Europe as often as I can. Most Europeans can speak at least three languages. If you're in Germany, you can speak, you're going to be able to speak Deutsche, you're going to be able to speak uh, French, uh, and you're probably going to be able to speak like, like a Dutch language. Uh, literally everybody over there speaks at least a couple languages. But, but it doesn't necessarily mean that she's an Einstein. Everybody over there does it. When you are stuck in a place where you have so many different cultures in such a close proximity, it's easy to pick up things from all of them. It doesn't mean that you're fluent. And that's what that's how she is. But Kimmel hoped that she got an advance on that prenup because if you think Melania hates Trump now, I love this, he said, just wait until she realizes that he's poor. Now, let me tell you a little something about this, because there's a little something everybody keeps talking about. Donald Trump has to show up with $565 million by Monday, or he's going to lose some properties. Well, let me tell you a little something about this. I know that we keep hearing about the whole thing about Truth Social going, going uh, live on the stock market, and it's going to automatically put about $3 billion in Donald Trump's pockets. And everybody might be thinking, well, crap, because we want to see him lose some shit. Well, guess what? It will take at least six months for him to get his hands any of that money from Truth Social. So uh, what that means is he's not going to have it until probably September time frame. And by then, uh, he's probably going to lose these cases. The ones that he did put money up for, like the Aging Carroll case, you do know that he's not going to get that back. He's going to appeal it, but once again, not one judge, but two judges uh, have went ahead and said that, yes, he did defame her, and then he does it again. She literally has the ability to take him back to court for the third time. That's a fact. But uh, yeah, it's going to get rough, folks, because uh, she's going to realize that she married her way to the bottom. That's a fact. All right. And before we go, our, before we do our memes of the day, Trump has until Monday to produce the bond. You know what? I already told you that. We're good. He has until Monday to produce that bond. And the money that uh, uh, is coming from True Social will not be able to help him. And oh, by the way, uh, she's already basically leaning forward, doing all the paperwork to go ahead and snatch up two of Donald Trump's best golf courses, Bedminster, Bedminster and, and another location. So Donald Trump's really going to hate losing his property, but uh, we really don't give a shit. We all think it's funny. So, all right, folks, now it's time for those memes of the day. Hunter's laptop! Hunter's laptop! 
the moment that James Comer knew that his sham Biden impeachment was over. Look at that picture. That's perfect. All them people behind him talking about what a shit stain it's been right there. And all he can do is put his palm to his face because he's an embarrassment because he's not a smart person. You know, this guy's from Kentucky. And look, Kentucky, you really should send more educated people because I don't give a shit what anybody says. This guy right here may be rich, but it's all because of freaking probably either he inherited money from somebody or he's a freaking criminal. But I'm going to tell you right now, this guy is a dumb son of a bitch. There's a reason why they call him Jim Gomer. Let that sink in. All right, let's see another one. The fact that an 18-year-old can't take out a $10,000 business loan but can take out a $100,000 student loan tells you everything you need to know. The current system doesn't want you to be independent and successful. It wants you to be reliant and obedient. And that's a fact, folks. That right there is a fact. And once again, folks, I'm telling you right now, you know, we've got people that are Republicans in Congress that literally would go back to a point where a woman can't even get a credit card in her name. That's how these people are. They want to go back in time, but they want to go back in time for all the wrong reasons. If these assholes get their way, we'll see colored only signs in bathrooms and water fountains again and cleaning services. I mean, it's literally, you've got people in Congress that literally want to take us to that direction. And you know what? We're not going to go that way. We're not going to go that way. We are not going to freaking go that way. We are not going to let them take us that way. All right, let's see another one. Public dollars belong in public schools. Absolutely. And folks, let me tell you something. This is, you know, the, the moment that they allowed for uh, charter schools to be able to take money from public schools, they destroyed public education. And I'm going to tell you, folks, charter schools, and I'm, I will tell you when we pass charter schools in West Virginia, You've got members of the West Virginia legislature that owns those damn charter schools. And they're taking money from public education. And when you take money from public education, what happens to the kids going to public school? Well, they lose capabilities. They'll end up losing their choir. They'll end up losing their arts and their music programs. Uh, they'll always keep the sporting programs because that actually brings in money to the, uh, to the, to the schools. Uh, but once again, you know, you're talking about losing capabilities. And if you take money, it's still going to affect the overall education of the kids going to public school. You know, if they can't get the books because they can't afford the books, uh, there's an issue there. There's a lot of things, a lot of items that are needed to teach kids. And if you don't have the funding, well, you don't get that. And, and what charter schools do and what Republicans keep pushing is basically taking the money away from private or public schools so that they don't have that capability. And it's really a disservice to all the children going to public schools. That's a fact. All right, let's do one more. Santos leaves the GOP. Gives a shit. Indicted fraudster George Santos says he's done with the Republican Party because the party continues to lie and swindle its voter base. First off, this son of a bitch still has yet to tell the truth, and every dime that he's ever friggin' got was swindled. So let that sink in. He says he's filing to run against the incumbent GOP congressman in New York's number one district as an independent. At the end of the day, guess what? He's not going to win. But the truth is, is he may actually help the Democrats. So, because here's the thing, that district is kind of like a, it's like leaning heavy R. Uh, but if uh, DeSantis is able to run as an independent and he takes 5% of the vote, if he takes 5% of the vote, it opens up the possibility that the Democrat running can actually win that seat and flip it to red, I mean to blue. Uh, folks, understand that uh, we're still going to take back the House. We just want to take it back with a, with a really, really large lead. And once again, you've got a Republican that's getting ready to uh, resign here in the next month, and that's going to take the Republicans down to just a one-vote lead in the House. And what that means is it's going to be real tough for the Republicans to push any of their bullshit. 
And then we're going to take it back. And we're going to take it back with the ferocity. And we're going to have enough people in the Democrat side in control where we're going to start pushing legislation. We're going to make cannabis go down from Schedule 1 to like to take it off the schedule period. Uh, we may even legalize it across the board, across the country. Uh, there's a lot of good things that are going to get going. Joe Biden's going to continue knocking it out of the park for the next 44 years. And that's exactly what we need, folks. So uh, outstanding. All right, folks, I appreciate you. Here. Folks, look, I'm going all the way through the 30 minutes now. I haven't coughed. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm good to go. I'm hoping that tomorrow I'm going to test negative so I can finally go back to the gym. I'm dying to the gym. So everybody, fingers crossed, send some good vibes this way that I test negative tomorrow, which is actually really cool how I got COVID. It's not cool, but, but the way this works is if you get COVID when you're done, it's like there's like a four month period of time where you can't catch COVID because your body still has all the antibodies to be able to defend anything for the next at least four months before something new comes. And the good part about that is, is that means that I will be able to go all the way through Europe and not have to worry about catching COVID. So I'm pretty pumped about that. Folks, y'all be good to each other and I'll see you all tomorrow. Sappers through the way, airborne all the way. Hunting, hunt. I was right.